Welcome back, everyone. We are so excited for this next segment. I was just backstage with Kathy reviewing our notes, and I really think you're gonna get a lot of value from this, uh, and there's a couple reasons for that. So for those of you that weren't at the summit, and I won't go back and retell the whole story, um, we introduced Kathy as a new coach and leader in our organization. And for our regulars, or the, for those that have been listening to the podcast for a while, or for those that have been coming to events, they, she needed really no introduction because they were very aware of who Kathy was in, in my life and, and what she did for me and the opportunity that she gave me because I've mentioned her name through the years. And so to give you kind of like a Reader's Digest version because we've got so many people in here that have already heard the story, um, Kathy took a chance on me at 20 years old to run one of her brokerages. I had no business running a brokerage. I mean, I, I, has, I had only been in the business for 18 months. Prior to that, I sold furniture while I was in high school. Uh, prior to that, while I was also in high school, I sold for Circuit City. So I had, no, uh, I had no management experience. I had no idea how to recruit. I had no idea how to train or manage. And what happened for me was, you know, I was how, this, how I decided to reach out to her and some other companies in Detroit for an opportunity was because I made the decision instead of going away to college like all my friends were doing that I was going to stay back and sell real estate. Well, I also grew up in a community where you were basically like a loser if you didn't go to college. I mean, like what? Everyone's going to college. Why wouldn't you go to college? And so I did end up going to college, which was my version of it anyways, and that was on the weekends. I would drive to college and party with all my friends. Um, and what I recognized was I didn't want, I had in my mind at that age, my ego, call it whatever, that I don't want to just be a salesperson my whole life. You know, all of my friends are going away to college, they're getting degrees in marketing and finance and business, and so I thought the only way I could maybe keep up with them would be to try to get a job doing what they would be doing after four years in college. And so after about 18 months in the business, and in that 18 month period, I probably made just over 200,000 in sales commissions, I went around the market to see who would hire me to run an office, because I wanted to keep up with all of my friends. I wanted to, in fact, I wanted to be ahead of all of my friends. When they got out of college, I wanted to already have the job that maybe a lot of them were going for, because I didn't get that opportunity to go away to college. I stayed back and got into real estate. And so I went around town and, and went to my first bro. Actually, I, I'm, I'm, I, I tend to be more on the loyal side, especially for somebody that gives me an opportunity. And so I went to my broker. I was with a Century 21 firm and said, hey, I'd like to run an office. Is there an opportunity to run one of your offices? And you know, I'll never forget the advice that the gentleman gave me was, Jeff, you're just not seasoned enough. You're not ready for it yet. Well, call it youth, call it ego, call it whatever. When somebody tells you that at 20 years old, what do you do? You think the exact opposite, right? I'll show you kind of thing. So I went around town and, and actually I met uh, Kathy Schweitzer who took a chance on me. She said, you know, this young guy, uh, you know, he, he's on a path, he's onto something. Let's, let's see what he could do with one of our offices. So I actually had the keys to one of their 16 locations. Now, and, and at 20 years old, by the way, I wasn't even 21 yet. I remember we had to, to we, we celebrated my 21st birthday after a sales meeting in the office. I remember that, it was a Tuesday. And so when I think back to that, those, that time spent together, now I had no business running an office. I mean, like I said, I had no experience. Later, by the way, I found out that they were getting ready to close the office anyway. So they didn't really have a lot to lose. <laughs> so uh, it became the fastest growing office in their, in their company after two years of me being involved. I got the opportunity to become their director of training and recruiting for all of their offices. And, and from there, that's kind of where I found my passion for what I'm doing today, which is you know, speaking, training, developing, coaching, and, and bringing out the best in others. I mean, that's really, when I look at you know, my strengths and where I should spend my time, that's because I love it. I mean, you guys, I don't think you recognize how much I really enjoy watching the success and sometimes setbacks that you guys are having. And I know they're always for the betterment of you. It's always for the further growth. And so that's kind of where I found that passion. And so um, 
through the years, Kathy and I stayed in touch. Uh, you know, I would still reach out to her for advice because you know, she was in charge of leading the leaders. That's what I respected so much about her role. They had 16 offices and her job was to train the brokers and managers of each one of those offices. So we stayed in touch. You know, I asked her a lot uh, often for advice. And once we started growing my brokerages and our team, I thought, gosh, wouldn't it be amazing if I could somehow get Kathy back into our world? And, you know, that, 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 that thought started probably like, 10 years ago, by the way. So um, in 10 years time, I stayed in touch. I put some plans together. I remember actually making the first offer to her about five years ago. You know, she said, yeah, that's not gonna be enough, kid. It's gonna, you're gonna have to go back and sharpen your pencil on that. <laughs> True story, by the way, sorry, Kathy. So anyways, fast forward to today, and she said, you know what, I, I, I think, you know, and she can tell the story better than, than I can, I'm sure, but I, I, I think you guys are onto something here at Glover U and I wanna be a part of it. And so Kathy, although she has all of the experience in, in leading leaders, uh, she was a coach for 10 years for another coaching and training organization, which is, has been wildly successful for the last couple decades. And she could easily say, well, they were onto something too, and they were, we're just onto something better. And so please do me a favor and join me in welcoming Ms. Kathy Schweitzer to the floor, please. Okay, so Kathy, um, obviously we've been talking a lot about what's going on in the, I know, you see, it's hard, you, unless it's front row. Get a suntan. Really um, we've been talking a lot about what's going on in the industry and in the market and what our clients are dealing with, and you've been through a handful of market shifts. How many years experience now? Uh, 34 years. 34 years experience in the business. <laughs> And started so, when I was 10. Started when she was 10. So you, you've seen it all. Good markets, bad markets, up markets, down markets. Okay. And when we decided to put the content together, because hopefully you can appreciate, you know, our events aren't just like parading speakers through. Our events aren't just, you know, all about the networking and, you know, networking, networking, networking. You get to do a lot of that. But our events are very methodical, right? We start with the Live Unreal formula for a reason. We get into the mindset talk for a reason. We don't even get to tactics until tomorrow, because you're not ready to receive those until we get the mind right today. So um, it was a perfect fit because, um, you know, for what it's worth, I mean, it's, it's safe to say that you and your husband are millionaires. Obviously, I've been that for a long time now, and we don't really talk about that part of it. But forget, forget about that. We've been around millionaires our whole life. Yeah. When, when we started sure. you know, going to events and, and following people that were successful, and you obviously have had a lot of people that you've looked up to as well. And there is. So, we put together a list yeah. of the differences between a millionaire's mindset and the average. Mm -hmm. And so I'll let, you've got some things you wanna share. I won't steal all the thunder. I'll let you jump no, in no, and we'll, we'll start talking. This Go ahead. How we, this is how we roll, you and me. So it's interesting when Jeff and I started talking, he said, let's talk about mindset, right? And I said, well, let's talk a little bit about millionaire mindset. It doesn't make a difference, you know, millionaire or not, but you can see the differences in the strength of people, right? and what they need to do to move forward, especially in downtime. So basically when we talk about mindset, Jeff and I always talk about mindset is nothing more than what's going on in your brain about everything all the time, right? You know, frankly, the bottom line is, and I'm blessed to have my nephew James here, he and I always laugh because we're always saying, you know, and his father, he'll appreciate this, you know, is today gonna be a great day or not such a great day, right? And the choice really is ours to make. So mindset, what's going on in your mind about everything all the time? So what are you thinking right now, right? Is it positive or negative? Now, it's very difficult to be around Jeff and not be positive, even when he has to talk about the reality of what's going on in the market. But here's what I want you to understand. Has the market shifted in the past couple years? Who's been in the business since 2019? Okay, John. John, have you seen any changes since 2019? A little bit. Just a little bit? Who's been, two, two, 2021, who was rocking and rolling 2021? Right, Paulie, you were out there rocking and rolling. So has it shifted? Has the market shifted? Yes. Right, so the question isn't the market shifting, it's how we look at it. 
But here's the deal that's so cool that Jeff and I talk about, is your opportunity is now. Do you guys get that? Your opportunity is now. And I'm going to tell you why. So I want you just to listen to this. Why? Because your competitors are fearful. And they're dropping out of the industry mm -hmm. like flies. And there's so many reports coming out now of predictions of agent count that what it's going to be yes. at the end of the year. Exactly. And I had somebody, I don't remember what city I was in, you know, when we did our tour last fall and we were talking about what's going on in the market and what's going to happen next. I said, well, Jeff, people aren't getting out of the business yet. I said, just, just wait till spring, summer of next year. You'll see it because what will happen is people will evaluate where their business is around spring and summer because that's when they're supposed to be doing well and having closings coming in and that's where you're going to see the fallout. Totally. And sure enough, two weeks ago, there was an article about, you know, I think it was in May, the first time in X amount of, in 10 years, less agents got in the business in the last decade in the month of May of 2023 and more agents got out of the business in the month of May 2023 than we've seen in the last decade. Right. So it's starting to happen and will continue, which is a good thing. That's why she says that's, this is your opportunity. That's a good thing. I mean, thing. I don't like to see people, right, fail or get out, but I know the truth of it is that when things change, the weak don't survive. The strong ones do. And the fact number two, why is it your opportunity now, is because you're here. You're taking the time to invest in yourself to be great at what you do. You have the best speaker and trainer. I mean, I can't help it. I raised him when he was 20. So, no, I'm sorry, Kathy, you raised him. Isn't it cute that his mom's name is Kathy and so am I? I love that, right? In all sincerity, though, the opportunity is huge. You're following Jeff. Why is your opportunity now? Because you have the tools and systems that you're implementing, right? Where's my friend Polly? Polly, systems, right? You're implementing them now. You've always done great, but now you're taking the time to implement your systems. Your opportunity is now. You've got to understand that that is the most important thing. Why? Because you're the ones that are stepping over the line. You're the ones that are drawing the line in the sand and saying, I am not going to let this market affect me. Are you guys with me? Yeah. You are not going to do it because your opportunity is now. And you're following systems. You're listening to Sales Rocket, which is unbelievable. I said it right. I didn't say SLS. Okay, That's good. Right. Sales, Sales Rocket, Rocket. yes. Because you're stepping over the line. You're making the decision, I'm not going to be okay. I'm going to change. I am going to be uncomfortable. I am going to do the tough things that I know I need to do in order to get through a challenging time. Why? Because you're working the extra long hours. I'm sorry, but right now you have to. If the market's 30% down, like Jeff said, you got to work an extra 30%. Yeah. So your opportunity is now. Everybody stand up. Stand up. It's after feet. lunch. I get it. Don't worry, there won't be any jumping jacks. <laughs> and Justin, I'm not going to make them even jump. But I want you to look at your person sitting next to you and say, your opportunity is now. Say it. One, two, three. <laughs> so that was all right. Good. OK, all right, all right. Steve. OK, no way. All right, all right, all right. Now watch. You guys, pretend that the Detroit Lions just won the Super Bowl. Okay, James, you with me? Okay, so, wait, there was a heart I think, attack. I think somebody said, who's the Detroit Lions? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Watch, you gotta be excited. Now, I want you to say this with the most enthusiasm. It's after lunch, so you gotta move a little bit, so whatever. I want you to, like, just go like this to yourself and say, as loud as you can, the opportunity for me is now. Three times. One, two, three. The, the opportunity, opportunity for me is now. The opportunity for me is now. The opportunity for me is now. And believe it, now sit down. Yes. So the other thing that we just have to, I just had to get you up, right? And here's the thing. In all sincerity, I have lived through, it always makes me laugh because my husband's 21 years older, than me. I always used to be the youngest one in the room. And then my friend here brought me on. Now I'm kind of like the oldest. But I've been doing this. So it is what it is. I can't do anything about going to the past. But here's the thing. What I've seen 
is that because I've lived through so many down markets and some tough ones that you, you know, you've uh, thrived in, and I've lived through some, but when you make up your mindset, and when we go through the points of the millionaires we're blessed to, to know, and they're just human beings, they just have more green, right? Um, at the end of the day, when you can grasp onto the opportunity, we can, when you can make the decision that you're going to cross over the line and get better, you can. It's all up here, as Jeff says. So the one thing I just want to say is, how do you start your morning? Is it with gratitude? Yes. yes, and I know a lot of you people here, and I know a lot of these great agents and people that I'm blessed to coach. You know, John, I'm getting to know you, Steve and Kim, obviously, you guys. You think positive when you wake up, but gratitude is so important. Or do you watch the news? Oh, yeah, that's always fun. You know, car crash, you know, the, sky, the, the, the sky's falling, whatever. So we have to understand that the mindset and what goes on here affects everything. And, and before we jump into the points, and I had a couple questions before, is that it's so interesting to me, and you guys get it, most of you, that what goes on in your mind is what affects everything. Yeah. Everything. And yet it's the first thing we blow off in the morning. Yep. Okay, who besides me has done that? I have it in my schedule every morning, 10 minutes of quiet time, I'm gonna put positive things, and all of a sudden, I'm looking at a text, and I get a, you know, I start doing something different. All of a sudden, it's like, why am I kinda of down? And I'm a pretty positive person. It's because I didn't take the time in the morning to focus on this. So keep that in mind. All right, I have a couple questions for you, then we're gonna dive into the points. Four questions. Okay. Do I look for opportunities in everything? Write that down. Yes, thank you. Everything. Good and bad. Good and bad. Where's the opportunity? It's awesome. Do I look oh, do I look for opportunities in everything? So one thing Jeff said earlier that I loved, you must look for opportunities in the problem, and that separates the best from the rest. We're gonna be faced with problems. Anyone else ever had any problems besides me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like daily, right? So, do I look for opportunities in everything, good and bad? Number two, please write down. Am I always looking at the bright side of every situation? Am I always looking at the bright side of every situation? What's the silver lining? What's, What's the, the bonus? Silver, I love that. Mm -hmm. What's the silver lining? There's now, always a silver lining. As a, as a business owner, you, you still want to be critical and, and to be able to see the blind spots. And looking for the bright side of every situation is what keeps you in action. Right. The challenge is if we spend more time looking at the negative than we do the positive, that's gonna stop you from taking action. Mm. So we can recognize the negative in every situation. We should be aware of the negative. We should learn from the negative. But if you look at just percentage of time spent in a situation or your thoughts around a situation that occurred or something that took place, how much time of your thought is spent looking at the bright side and the silver lining versus the negative side? I mean, I, I would say a safe formula would be like 80-20. 80% yeah. 80 bright side, 20% being aware of what's really happening. I love that. I love the way you describe that. I've not heard you describe it that way. I love that. So am I always looking at the bright side of every situation, good or bad? Number two. Number three, do I look for the best in others? Do I take the time to look for the best in others? Let's be honest, is there ever a real estate transaction where the agent on the other side, you just really want to just... <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Everyone shake your head yes. I mean, this is not my first rodeo. And so I remember a great guy I worked with in Boston when I was in Boston for 10 years. I'm like, they don't think the way you think, right? So you have two opportunities. You can, you can look for the best in that person and it's hard sometimes, and try to coach them through the transaction, or you can just screw up the transaction. So do you look for the best in others? And one, one way to help you with that would be thinking about, and this is just another kind of follow-up question to that, do I honestly know what they've been through and where they're coming from? Mm. Mm. Do I honestly know what they've been through and where they're coming from? Because if you're ever feeling negative thoughts about someone because of something they said or because of something they did or because of the way they're behaving, 
Do I honestly know where they've been and where they're coming from? And if the answer to that is no, you can't, you can't judge them. No. If you don't know where they've been and where they're coming from. Yep. That's a good question. I'm going to write that down. Hmm. John, you can share it with me later. Okay, good. Number four, do I focus on all the good things and wins that are happening to me daily? Do I focus on all the good things and the wins that happen to me daily? Guys, it can just be a little win, right? It's a little win. So I always challenge everyone to look at your little wins throughout the day. We all have them. You know, we're all going to have crap, excuse me, I'm just saying it, thrown at us every day, and we're all going to have little wins that are thrown at us. So do we, are you taking the time to slow down to look at the wins? Even when you didn't have a great day. There's, Even, you got to no. find a win in each day. If you didn't set an appointment, you didn't take a contract, you didn't take a listing, well, you had to have done something. Well, I did add three people to my database. All right, that's a win. That's going to be future business. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's waking up every day. Hey, I woke up. It's a win. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, let's get up and go. So one thing that I just wanted to say that we talked about is that, you know, the millionaire mindset, they have a GOI attitude. You guys know what GOI is? They have a GOI attitude. Get over it. Get over it. Jeff kept saying earlier, which I love a lot, is the short memories. Yes, have a short memory. I mean, anyone pretend to watch golf or pretend to play or whatever? So the one thing about professional golfers is when they screw up on the hole, they can't have a long memory about that past hole. You no. guys with me? If they do, they're, that's it, because that's a mind game as much as physical. So short memories. They have a GOI attitude. Get over it and move yeah. on. Yeah. You can't live in the past. It doesn't help. So, so before we get into the points, yes, sir. did you want to say anything else on that? Because I want, nope. I want to Far show away. an example of oh, yeah. what mindset can do yeah, yeah. for you, to you. Uh, and, and, you know, when you look at, you mentioned the game of golf. I mean, it, it is, anybody in here who's a good golfer, and I can't speak to this because I'm not a good golfer, <laughs> uh, everyone's like, but you golf so much. I would think you're a good golfer. I, I'm just not. It's, it's, it's okay. I'm, I'm getting better. <laughs> My handicap's getting lower. Anyways, anyone who knows anything about golf, as Kathy said, is it's how you approach not just the round, not just the hole, every shot. Every shot. Every shot is a mindset. It is. So whether it's playing golf or listing and selling real estate or being a leader to somebody in your world, I wanted to share, I found a great example of what mindset can do to you, whether it's golf or something else. So I think we've got that. Talk about mindset. Let's take a look. Sweet. Hey, hey, hey! Who wants to have some fun? <laughs> I do. I do. Now are you just saying you want to have fun, or do you really want to have fun? <laughs> I really want to have fun. I'm just saying I want to have some fun. <laughs> right now, there are 600 titleists that I got from the driving oh, range in the trunk of my car. <laughs> Why don't we drive out to Rockaway and hit them into the ocean? <laughs> now picture this. We find a nice sweet spot between the dunes. We take out our drivers. We tee up and <gasps> that ball goes sailing up into the sky, holds there for a moment, and then... <gasps> <laughs> I did it for you. I don't know what you had to tell her that for. You put me in a very difficult position, marine biologist. I'm very uncomfortable with this whole thing. Yeah, with all due respect, I would think it's right up your alley. Well, it's not up my alley. It's one thing if I make it up. I know what I'm doing. I know my alleys. You got me in the Galapagos Islands living with the turtles. I don't know where the hell I am. Well, you came in the other day with all that whale stuff, the squeaking and the squealing and... Look, why couldn't you make me an architect? You know I always wanted to pretend that I was an architect. Well, I'm, I'm supposed to see her tomorrow. I, I'm going to tell her what's going on. I mean, maybe she just likes me for me. Hey, hey. Hey, you want these? I don't want them. What? I stink! <laughs> I can't play! The ball is just sitting there, Jerry, and I can't hit it. I only hit one really good ball that went way out there. 
Well, what happened? I have no concentration! <laughs> what's, what's, what's wrong with you? Sand! I can't get rid of the sand! <laughs> but there's still some in here! Won't go away! Look at that, I even got sand in the pockets! Hey, come on, you're getting it all over the floor! <laughs> Mindset. Okay? We gotta flip that mindset. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna jump into millionaire mindset. I didn't even know we were showing that. We talked about golf right before it, so <laughs> I mean, it was awesome. All right, so we've got 10 strategies, okay? Because when we talk about muscle, or your mindset, remember it's a muscle. So I would almost put in parentheses, uh, exercises. Let's just call them exercises, all right? If you wrote down strategies, that's fine, but put in parentheses, exercises. Yep. Because if there's anything you take away from today, moving forward, you're gonna exercise having a strong mindset. I'll start us off with number one. Make the decision daily that you're going to be positive and participate with enthusiasm regularly. Make the decision daily that you're going to be positive and participate with enthusiasm regularly. You wake up every day. Today's gonna to be the best day. I remember the, one of the first books you had me read, The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. Yes, yes. All right, anybody know that book? Yep. yep, write that down. The Power of Positive Thinking. One of the first books, my assignment at 20 years old as a manager for her. Jeff, read this book and help agents do the same. Mm -hmm. You have to make the decision, it's a decision. You get to have the choice. Today's going to be a great day or a bad day. And if there are things that don't go our way, you have, the dis you have a choice to continue it going this way or this way. Did you want to any add anything yeah. to that one? So it's interesting because it sounds so basic, right? We have a choice every day to be positive, have energy, have enthusiasm. Does anyone else besides me ever sometimes don't feel like doing that? Yeah, so thank you for the three of you that are telling the truth. Okay, anybody back there, right? There are days, right, where we just like, what's happening? I don't know why. So it is a decision to make it great or not. And the one thing that, and I know Kate and Taylor and, and Alana and all the rest of Jennifer, you know, Jeff, I, it is very difficult to not be positive around this man right here, okay? I can't even imagine, Jennifer, you can relate, him complaining about anything. Right, the positivity that comes out of Jeff, so you guys can smile and like clap for him because it's really amazing, is <laughs> unbelievable, I don't see it, right? So millionaire mindset, they choose positivity. It doesn't mean that a millionaire or someone with a healthy mindset doesn't get crabby once in a while, right? They just keep it short, <laughs> you guys get it? Yeah. So it is a choice every day. And again, knowing a lot of you, I know you think that way, so we can move on to number two. All right. And uh, we wrote down, and this, some of you that know me know this, but the millionaire mindset and the people that have a strong mindset, they get that when the body is in motion, the mind will follow. Yes. It's one of my favorite sayings I heard a long time ago. It's very difficult to be crabby if you're moving forward. So I had a client one time, uh, even older than I am, and she's like 75. And she was down, and she was out. And I was just having a conversation with someone about you know, getting older, right? And, and I kept saying, are you moving? Right, are you getting up and moving? So when you take action, she finally did, I put her like on a Kate regimen, right? And said, get up and move and pick up the phone. Get up and move and pick up the phone. Get up and move and pick up the phone. All of a sudden, a month later, she's like, I'm the happiest I've ever been. Because when the body is in motion, the mind follows. Mm -hmm. Millionaire mindset and real estate agents understand that. They understand that when you move and you take action. They understand that when they prospect every day, they get a great result. Hello, my friend Jeff here, right? Who I was blessed to coach after he worked for Schweitzer. I coached him for years. You know, the thing about him, and again, I'm just using him as an example because he's standing there. It happens to have his name on it, but, you know, besides that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, he would move. He would prospect every day. And when you take action, you feel better. Would you guys agree? Yes. You always feel better. I don't want to prospect. I'm not going to prospect. I'm going to find 45,150 other things to do besides prospect. And then all of a sudden, your coach or a mentor or a friend says, come on, dude, you can do this. Let's do it. Let's do it together. 
and then you take the action, and then you're like, this is what happens. You tell your coach, I did it, and it worked. I'm like, you're kidding. <laughs> you mean we dedicate our lives to things that don't work? So the millionaire mindset, whether it's in real estate or not, they understand that when the body's in motion, the mind gets better. Yeah. So always remember that. I, 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 I remember there was a period of time where I was training for you know, some type of whatever they call the biking, swimming, running thing. And I just, what is it? The what? No, not a marathon, triathlon. The what? A triathlon. The buggy? No, the, the, the bike. Oh, the bike. The bike. I thought you said the, the bike. The swim, the run. Oh, the bikes. And um, I remember just constantly how I was getting through that because it was uncomfortable for me. I'd never trained for anything like that. How I was getting through it is I just constantly kept telling myself in my mind, the mind quits before the body, the mind quits oh. before the body, the <laughs> mind quits before the body, the mind quits before the body, the mind quits. And I would imagine marathon runners who do that regularly, they probably have to have that self-talk because your mind is telling you you want to stop. Your mind is telling you it's painful. Your yes. mind is telling you to slow down. Your mind is telling you it's time to recover. The mind always quits before the body. Mm -hmm. So when you say when the body's in motion, the mind will follow, same thing. I love that. All right, number three, millionaire mindsets are calm. You know, you never let them see you sweat. You're always cal calm, cool, and collected. Millionaire minds are always calm. You never, you'd never see them sweating. Mm -hmm. They're always calm, cool, and collected. When a deal falls apart, when a buyer is mad at you, nothing, nothing is going to put you in a tizzy. There's no such thing. There, you don't have tizzies as a millionaire no, mindset with don't. a millionaire mindset. No, nope, no tizzies. When I, when I, <laughs> no. And you, being calm is a trained habit. It is a trained habit. It's a trained habit. When I think about, um, for years, we had uh, this piece of paper. I think it's still there above our copier in the Plymouth location. And it says the pro is the person that has all the same problems, all the same prospects, all the same issues, yeah. and you would never know it. Right. The amateur is the person who it's very obvious mm -hmm. they've got issues. It's very obvious they've got things going on. Yeah. The pro is always called, the millionaire mindset is always calm, cool, and collected. It's interesting observing um, people that have made millions of dollars. I just, I have friends for whatever reason, that have done it, not necessarily in real estate, but when, when there's a tough time, or even my husband, who's, who was started Schweitzer Real Estate, whatever, we had 17 offices or 16 or whatever, a lot, 45-year-old company, when things were tough, I'd look at Paul, and you know, James, you know Paul, he's like this. Or like we're boating on the Great Lakes. You can boat on the Great Lakes. Did you guys know that? Just kidding. So we used to boat on the Great Lakes, and like the weather would be terrible, right? And he's a good captain of a, of a boat, and like I'm in there and the, there's like six, seven, eight foot waves and I'm sitting there wanting to put like a pillow over my head. Okay, let's be honest. And he's calm. So what's interesting in watching the calmness is all, is it all, it's all an observation. I mean, I've just watched people be calm when the, you know what is hitting the fan. So that's one thing that I've learned myself. I have a three by five card that says calm on it, just so you know. So we, it's a learned trait. Yeah. But when you watch the millionaire mindsets, when a tough, like the economy crashing and things going around, I've seen more people go bankrupt. You know, Justin, obviously you've been there, but they're calm and they, they just know how to work through it a little bit better. And you can practice being calm by actually building it into your schedule. So you could have 15 minutes of calm time in the morning, 15, which is when I do it, and 15 minutes of calm time in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I don't care if it's right after you wake up or whatever. For me, it's right before I write the daily message. So every morning, Monday through Friday, I write the daily message. And I take five to seven minutes, 10 minutes or so to myself to just, in silence, just think about what took place the previous day. And, and you know, by myself, alone, in silence, just thinking about what I want to accomplish that day and the message that I want to get out to our audience. You can schedule time for calm thinking. Mm -hmm. That can be budgeted into your schedule. It's, I think one of the best decisions I've ever made is the quiet time and the solitude time to reflect and be grateful and, uh, and learn how to be calmer. And again, it was one of my driver personalities, right? We always want to get up and like just move, right? Move and bust over everyone and not listen and do all the things that we shouldn't do. So it takes, it, some of us need to learn how to be more calm. 
And it's one of the greatest gifts that I've given to myself, but also watching people do that. Okay, next point. Number four, millionaire mindsets have a clear plan. So Jeff has been talking about planning. They have a clear plan and a vision of where they want to go, who they want to attract, and they learn to embrace the numbers. Uh-oh. I see that. You wrote that, and that's in all caps, by I the did. way. Embrace the numbers. So the millionaires embrace the numbers. Now, who besides me, I know I keep bringing up me, but I can't help it because I'm human and I, you know, I'm not a big number person. Who's not a big number person? All the high eyes, I'm not even a high. <laughs> like, I know how to get through a P&L, but, you know, I had to learn how to look at the numbers and learn to love them. I mean, I don't know if I'd love them, but maybe like them. <laughs> That's a little dramatic. <laughs> but at the end of, end of the day, millionaire mindsets have a clear plan and a vision of where they want to go. What they, who they want to attract and learn to embrace the numbers to get there. They have a clear cut goal and a mission and vision. It's not always easy to be that clear. But at the end of the day, sit with your significant other, your spouse, your coach, your mentor, your family, and, and take some time and quiet time for yourself and say, what do I want to do to live my unreal life? What does that look like? So they have a clear plan. And even if, the, even if the plan is not clear immediately, just start with a plan. And I have stories that I can go on forever with some of the entrepreneurs I've been fortunate to know my whole life that were very messy in the beginning. And then they ended up really doing amazing things for a lot of people. Number five, the millionaire mindset has strong core values has strong core values and they find ways to double down on them. The millionaire mindset has strong core values and they find ways to double down on them. It's very obvious what their core values are, whether it's health, whether it's family, whether it's business or a combination of those. They're very clear about what their core values are and how they can double down and get the most out of them. When is the last time you wrote down your core values? I know in your core salesperson and CEO, yeah. that's something you work on, not just as individuals, but also as, as business owners for the business. Yep. Can, can you share what, what, when you think of core values, in business and work and life, what, what do you, what comes to your mind? Well, I mean, you know, so when you look at it in, in business, right? So our core values in our business really don't stem too far away of, from who we are as people. You guys get that? So if you're a leader in your organization, who's a team leader or a broker? Or leading a team. Or leading a team, yeah. Yeah. So at the end of the day, your core values, you know, usually stem from here, right? Something deep in here. There's some something that then you go out as a company and you create the core values with the people that work for you. A and Jay, plan. you experience that. And you know, Jeff does that. So in our salesperson to CEO class, we go through your vision, your mission, your value proposition. You walk away, right John, with a clear value proposition, but also your core values. So you go back to your team and you actually ask your team about how they would describe you. Why do they work here? Bingo. And Jeff did that with Glover Agency, and Jennifer, you know that. And it's, it's something that is huge uh, and so important uh, when you're a team leader. So, you know, I wrote down ours. You By know, the way, there's a takeaway yeah. in that. Your core values are what you demonstrate, not what you say. Ah, yeah. Your core values are, are your example. The example that you set, not what you say they are. Mm -hmm. That's why there's a lot of value in asking others what they think they are because your core values are what you demonstrate, not what you say they are. Right, so ours at Glover Agency, consistent, driven, passionate, proactive, and groundbreaking. All right, number six. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite thoughts, you'll appreciate this, the ones that know me. Millionaire mindsets, and the ones that I've witnessed and fortunate to be around, is they get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yay! Did you guys get it? They get comfortable being uncomfortable. Okay, who besides me, okay, who's ever jump, jumped out of an airplane with a parachute? 
<laughs> Who's ever done that? Okay, I haven't. I've never am in my entire life. But were you a little uncomfortable before you did it? Okay, everyone say yes. Yes. Okay, so you've got to learn that is, if you're a millionaire mindset, you are going to embrace discomfort. Because on the other side is where all the growth comes in. When you hold back and you're thinking you're not going to jump out of an airplane, I'm not jumping out of an airplane, so that's a bad example for me. But when you hold back because you're uncomfortable and then you don't do it, how do you feel? You don't feel good because then it bothers your mindset. You think about it. I should have just made that one more call. I should have just picked up the phone and prospected. How many times in our life with leading and coaching have I had someone call me, Kathy, I did it. I actually followed up in the evening. And actually, the last call of the day, I made an appointment. I was so uncomfortable, but I was so excited because I did it. Have you ever felt that way? No? Yes? yes. Watch, because you got comfortable being uncomfortable. That's where the growth is. On the other side of discomfort is all the beauty and growth. So what will you do between now and let's say July 1st that's uncomfortable that you will commit to in your business that you are going to leave here and say, I am not going to be a wimp anymore. Sorry. I am going to be someone that is going to embrace discomfort. I am going to prospect. Sorry. That's what we do. I am going to do blank between now and July 1st. And it makes me so uncomfortable that I just feel sick. But I'm going to do it anyway. Why? Because on the other side of it is beauty, love, amazingness, and you feel like a million dollars. So millionaire mindsets get, get comfortable being uncomfortable. On the other side of discomfort is where all the growth comes in. Speaking of being uncomfortable, uh, who's planning on jumping in the lake tonight? Where's my Andrew Pepper at? Where's Andrew at? <laughs> Andrew. Now, it's not uncomfortable for you anymore, is it? No, this is just like every day. So you got, are you going to recruit some friends to be uncomfortable with you? Yes, including you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! yeah. Wow. Be careful what you wish for, I guess. Okay. <laughs> All right, number seven. Millionaire mindsets have a real thorough understanding that nothing happens to you. Nothing happens to you. Nothing happened to you. Millionaire mindsets get that everything happens for you. There's books written on this. We had uh, Jeff Henderson from uh, a, a former executive of Chick-fil-A on this stage a few years back. Millionaires don't think that anything happens to them. Oh, can you, they don't talk like, can you believe this happened to me? I can't believe they this don't. happened to me. Mm -mm. They don't have those conversations. Kathy, you're not going to believe what happened and then how I overcame it. Yeah. Those are the conversations. You're not going to believe what happened and how I convinced them otherwise. You're not going to believe what happened and how I bounced back. Because uh -huh. they're always looking for the silver lining. Oh. There's always a benefit to something bad happening. There's always an advantage on the other side. There's always a gain or a win on the other side. Nothing happens to you. Everything happens for you. And that's number seven. That's an excellent point. Number eight, very little drama, and they fail forward. They fail forward. <clears throat> Failure is one of the most beautiful things that can happen to you, depending on how you look at it. Because without it, you, there's no growth. So they learn to fail forward. During the last recession, and you know, Justin mentioned earlier his bankruptcy, I was coaching numerous people that went bankrupt. Numerous. And then I have a chance to talk to them again year after year after year where they turned it all around. This gal was losing so much money. Her name was Nora. And she was, I mean, she was very gritty, right? So she's like, I'm going to get through this. So I saw her like a year ago. She's now a millionaire because she made the choice that she was going to fail forward. I've had a lot of people that I know that have filed bankruptcy in the last recession or years ago. They don't see that. I mean, it's not easy, right? And some of you have been there before. 
but they understand that this is just part of life. And we're going to be faced with financial challenges sometimes. It's just part of life. And here's the thing I pray for all of us when we go through this, because we've all been there, including me, is I pray that you understand that that's just a gift that you're getting to learn how to be better. It's a gift to learn how to be better, but you got to look at it as failing forward. So no drama in failing forward. Kathy, when, when uh, you wrote this one out, uh, my mind instantly went to, and it it's, falls under the drama one a bit, um, millionaire mindset, people with a millionaire mindset are usually, well, first of all, they're never involved in any gossip. Yeah. I mean, they don't have time for that. Yep. Because that would just hold them back. If it's not a positive conversation, why would we talk about something exactly. that holds back? But number two, they're always the last to know the yeah. drama totally. and the gossip. That's such a good point. So honestly, do some self-reflecting. Are you usually one of the first to know? Or are you one of the last to know? That's an honest assessment of, of your mindset as it relates to this point. Be one of the last to know. Don't be the first to know. Be one of the last to know about the gossip, the drama. Or better yet, don't know at all because you don't care because you're too focused on what's going on here, not what's happening behind you. Totally. No participation in that. The last point under uh, millionaire mindset. Well, hold on. Oh, my bad. There's 10. That was eight. I'm up it was? Now. Yeah. Oh, my bad. That was number eight. Sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. I can't count. Remember, I'm not That's a right. numbers person. Do you? Number nine. <laughs> number nine. Millionaire mindsets exercise the five-minute rule. Millionaire mindsets exercise oh, yeah. the five-minute rule. In other words, next time that French fry falls on the ground, you got five minutes. <laughs> That's not what it is. The five-minute rule is going back to the short memory. Yeah. Reflect on it. Think about it. Process maybe what you would do differently next time and get over it. You got five minutes. Next time something negative happens to you, a negative emotion, uh, a negative situation, drama, gossip, whatever it is that's negative, you got five minutes to be negative and move on quickly. Because a bad hour can turn into a bad morning, a bad morning can turn into a bad day, a bad day can turn into a bad couple of days, a bad couple of days can turn into a bad week, a bad week can turn into a bad couple of weeks, a cu bad couple of weeks can turn into a bad one. Five minute rule. You got five minutes when something negative happens for you. You got five minutes to reflect on it and move on, moving forward. That's your, that's your stopwatch for that. That's number nine. Okay. Now, can I go to number 10 now? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. <clears throat> yeah, it's so interesting about the five minute rule. I learned that through one of my coaches, my mentors, who said, I'm like, I'm so disappointed. And he goes, life's full of disappointment. You got five minutes. I'm like, okay, okay, right, get it, let's move on. But I love that, and that's changed a lot of people's lives, that little tip, so. Number 10, millionaire mindsets are passionate and they have humility. The most successful people financially that I've been fortunate to be around are extremely humble. They get empathy, they get kindness, they get calmness. They get that their lives are there to contribute to the lives of others. And they know their why. They might never, ever talk about their why. I had a great friend, I just have to mention here, Bill Whalen, who's still a good friend of my husband and I. And we traveled, there was eight of us that traveled all the time. And he is the most, the quietest guy, but always positive. By the way, sense of humor. Millionaire mindsets, every single one I've known <clears throat> that are versatile have a great sense of humor. But he was calm and quiet, but fun, right? And he just worked really well. He had, um, he warehouses metals for the London Stock Exchange. So during the last recession, when the economy is no good, he's an entrepreneur, right? When the economy no, is no good, where do they store everything? In the warehouses, he had a mile long warehouse in New Orleans that we went to see. It's like a mile long, all of these metals, like aluminum and all that. So we spent 20 years together, all the time having a great time, beautiful, great guy, entrepreneur, he and his wife. And all of a sudden, 
we're on, we were on a boat together having a drink, and, and, and his wife said, I'd like to make a toast to Billy. And we're like, oh, okay, congratulations, Bill. What did you do? I just sold my aluminum warehousing to Goldman Sachs. Now, he never told us, we're like, congratulations, congratulations, great. He never told us how much he sold it for. We get back and read in Crane's Detroit business, $500 million. <laughs> I mean, we did fly on his jet, but I was like. <laughs> <laughs> she had a but feeling. I still couldn't she had an believe idea. 500, but, and again, we're still friends. We're just with him, you know, never talk about it. It's just, it's just humble, it's humility, it's kindness. And so the humility part of our lives, and those of you, again, that I'm blessed to know, all of you that I know are very hum humble, including you. I mean, when you were 20, it was a little different, but you know, you <laughs> when I hired you. I can run this office, are yeah. you kidding me? Yeah, right. Well, I believed in that, for sure. <laughs> so life is short, right? We all have the same 24 hours in a day. So let's take these points, or identify the two or three or four that you want to work on that you want to get better at. And schedule it. Actually, just like you have, of course, you have prospecting starting at 8 a.m. and you have lead follow-up starting at 10 a.m. Just like you have all of that built in your schedule, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> the front couple rows. Um, this is built into your schedule as a set time every day. Pick, identifying two or three of those and, and exercising that work. Anything else on this before we shift to the conversation?